Hello, my name is Laia Turmovidal, and I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors Yin Chu Lee, Martin Stoyanov, Karin Johansson, Beatrice Stilstedt, and Lina Eklund, our paper towards advancing body maps as a research tool in interaction design. In the last two decades, HCI and interaction design have experienced an increased focus on the body in design. And yet, it is challenging for participants and designers to articulate and capture somatic experiences. A popular research tool to do so are body maps, a blank drawing of a human silhouette in which people can report on their felt sensations and emotions by filling them with drawings, scribbles, and symbols in the areas where they are felt. While body maps are widely used in body-centric research communities, they are not neutral research tools. Their design carries implicit assumptions on what is a body, how we represent a body, and what aspects shape our somatic experiences. These assumptions also shape the ways in which people will think about their body and will capture their experience. In this paper, we wanted to examine some of the implicit assumptions that the classic body map incorporates, with the goal of opening up for future alternative body maps that could, potentially, better address a plurality of bodies and capture multiple different aspects that shape our somatic experience. To do so, we followed a research through design approach and invited 11 participants to help us explore how future body maps could look like. All the participants were women and researchers at different career stages working on body-centric technologies and in domains such as sports, reproductive health, physiotherapy or biometric AI. In addition, all of them had previously used tools to capture somatic experiences, among them body maps. We organized two participatory design workshops that followed a craft-based approach to ideation. Using different craft materials, such as cardboard, foam, clay, or clips, participants were invited to imagine and build prototypes for future body maps. We told participants to use as inspiration their own research or personal experience on what type of somatic sensations they would like to capture and how they would like to capture them. We also asked them to share with others their ideas. The workshops resulted in 25 prototypes that illustrated ideas for alternative body map designs. We analyzed these ideas using a reflexive thematic analysis that was strongly shaped by our theoretical grounding as authors, such as in some aesthetics, entanglement theories in HCI, or social action. The result of our analysis is an annotated portfolio that includes a set of five design techniques that our participants used to craft their body maps prototypes, and that we also use in the paper to annotate them. The portfolio also includes a set of six design themes that encompass how the classic body map could be advanced. The five design techniques that we identified are connecting, coding, abstracting, layering, and quantifying. The first one, connecting, helped to portray relations between causes and effects, or relations between body parts. And in the paper, and also later in the presentation, we use the term con to annotate the images of the prototypes. Participants also used specific symbols, icons, words, and colors to code and distinguish different sensations and emotions, for which we use the term code for coding. Participants portrayed the body and their somatic sensations in more or less abstract or realistic ways, which we call abstracting, and for which we use the term apps. Participants also portrayed sensations that built on each other and tried to capture the inside and the outside of the body, which we called layering, and for which we use the term lay. And finally, people quantified varying degrees of intensity and importance to which sensations and emotions were felt, which we call quant. In relation to the design themes, our analysis yielded six recurring themes in the prototypes that participants built. Temporality, sociality, representativeness, granularity, context, and focus. These themes capture the different ways in which our participants thought that body maps could be advanced, so to better address a plurality of bodies and aspects that shape their somatic experience. In the paper, we explain each theme in detail with examples. Here I only have time to discuss three of them, but I refer you to our paper for the complete annotated portfolio. The first one, temporality, refers to capturing the relation between sequences of time, or particular events, and the felt sensations and emotions. This theme connects with individual and collective awareness of change, as experienced both in the world and in within oneself, and with events contained in a particular situation and duration. The classic body map design often prompts a focus on singular points of the experience, but several of our designs explored other temporalities. 
For example, one participant captured the different stages of her panic attacks, using transparent sheets stuck one on top of each other, to portray the temporality of different sensations that are overcoming and overlapping. Starting with feeling tension all over the body, depicted in black, and then at the peak of the attack, adding to it anxiety, depicted in blue. And finally, a calmness at the end of the attack, overcoming both the tension and the anxiety. Another theme is sociality, that refers to capturing how bodies interact with each other and affect each other's somatic experience. This theme connects to how our social interactions affect how we experience ourselves and what sensations and emotions we feel. The classic body map design focuses on a singular body, which can prompt an understanding of the body as individual and isolated from intersubjective relations that shape our experience. Several of the prototypes focused on capturing the social impact on the somatic experience. For example, in this prototype, one participant captured how her awareness during dancing lessons was highly influenced by her dancing partner. Using orange clay foam, she showed that her attention was often focused on the body areas that were in closer proximity to her dancing partner, such as the lower back, where the partner had the hand, and the groin. The final theme I will present is representativeness, which refers to inclusion and diversity of human bodies in the representations. This theme builds on prior HCI work that moves away from viewing the body as universal and generalizable, often the body of an adult, a male, a white and abled body, and towards addressing a plurality of bodies that have not often been centered in mainstream research, such as disabled, old, fat and racialized bodies. The classic body map, with its abstracted silhouette, does risk perpetuating a universalized and generalized body. In contrast, our participants proposed different prototypes that could better capture a plurality of bodies. One suggestion was to use portrait body maps, for example, taking a picture with a tablet or a Polaroid camera, resulting in a hyper-realistic canvas for the person depicted to fill in. Another suggestion was to update the classic body map silhouette so it could also represent different body sizes, ages or disabilities, so as to have more personalized silhouettes. And finally, someone suggested to use the own body as a body map, for example, using post-its to write sensations and stick them to the part of the body where they are felt. This prototype would require some method of documentation, such as taking a picture of the person afterwards. The other three themes that I do not have time to present in detail are granularity, which focuses on capturing somatic experiences with nuance, richness and detail, for example, by portraying 3D perspectives of the body or non-visible parts of the body. Another one is context, which focuses on capturing some of the contextual elements that affect somatic experiences, for example, the weather. And the final theme is focus, which centers on capturing and focusing on a subdivision of the somatic experience. There are some reflections from our work that we would like to share. First, that our resulting design themes were constructed based on our own theoretical grounding as authors. In our study, we wanted to examine the implicit assumptions of the classic body map design, and we arrived at other ways of conceptualizing the body and the somatic experience. We argue that there is no escaping such theoretical assumptions and perspectives. What we can do is to be aware of them and critically examine how they appear in our research, how they shape our research tools, and how they influence how people reflect on their body and capture their experiences. We also want to highlight that our work is highly explorative and that future work is needed to assess if the design themes and the particular prototypes can be re replicated and used successfully in real projects. In this paper, we contribute to the body-centric research community in TEI and also more broadly in HCI and interaction design with our annotated portfolio that includes design themes and design techniques. The design themes, as well as the prototypes, are not intended to supplant the classic body map. Rather, we hope that they can provide inspiration to others to examine or challenge their research tools and their implicit assumptions and open up for future body maps that can address a plurality of bodies and aspects that shape our somatic experiences. Finally, we believe that our design techniques can provide others with practical ways to develop their own novel body maps. Thank you very much for your attention, and I will be connecting now to answer your questions and comments.